the boys spin off Gen V might as well as be Gen Z because it's freaking awesome, baby. Oh my lord, I just got done watching Gen V, the first episode, and all the things I was afraid of that I was concerned about, the lead character being the bestest ever, all of that was put to bed. See, this is not just a channel that complains, but this is a channel that rejoices in things that I think are good. Decent writing, good characters. I like to see flawed characters have to grow. It's very interesting. So here we are to talk about the boys spinoff, Gen V. I watched the first episode, so I can only give you what I know about the first episode. There will be spoilers as I will go over the plot. But hell yeah, I like this thing. This is just like the boys, only more outrageous. It was pretty wild. There's some good stuff in this. Some real good stuff. Y'all gonna like this if you give it a chance. I think it's gonna take a couple weeks to get the buzz behind it. <laughs> but when some of the outrageous stuff that people see in this, they, oh my, I can't believe they put this on television. There's... <laughs> There's some things in here I don't feel comfortable describing. But let's get into it. Let's talk about it. And let's talk about Gen V, Episode 1, Recap God You. I didn't even know that was the title. But I'm allowed. I like this so far. So far. Now you have to forgive me because I don't know all the characters' names yet. I'm still learning. I remember something about Cricket. Tiny Cricket. Anyway, so essentially, think of the boys, but they need to recruit for the Seven. The Seven's having some issues now. Obviously, uh, Maeve has left the Seven. Starlight's left the Seven. So there's some issues. They need to think about it. What we've now realized is that Compound V is given to children, and eventually they get their powers a lot of them get them, some of them get them as infants, some of them get as t them as teens. Difficult to say how they get them, but it's pretty wild. This whole, I just, I thought this was great. Um, you get an ad right in the beginning with an alum from Bridgerton. I've never seen that. She's never, she hasn't been in it anyway, in Indra Shetty. But it's just hilarious because they keep playing this thing where it's like, a community of faculty and peers who will accept you as unique and culturally rich change agent you are. <laughs> it's like, of course, it's total nonsense. This is a front and they're an evil corporation and they're just trying to get superheroes under their control. And what you're seeing is the origin story of Marie Moreau, who's Jazz Sinclair from The Chilling Adventures of S Sabrina. And, you, and they're like, oh... Her goal is to become the first black woman to join the su top soup team from the seven. What her motivations, though, by the end, and again, spoilers. So if you're here, we'll talk about it. Her motivations are just simply awesome. All she wants to prove, as seen in her flashback, is that she wants to prove to her sister that she's not a monster, that she can actually be used for good. Uh, her ability is the manipulation of blood, which I will say has been stolen from a very good anime, which never got its due, and is uh, it's called Dead Man Wonderland, and it's all about people who can manipulate blood, which I think is a pretty wild skill. You know, blood has iron in it, so it could be sharpened to a knife. It could do a lot of different things. Uh, this is eight years before the main timeline. Marie's parents are watching Vought Sport, Sports Network, and they're hearing about how A-Train is the first black man drafted into the seven. Marie, clearly something's going on with her, and, uh, you know, I was like, oh, she's getting her period. And her powers appear. Well, her mom, she gets upset, and her mom breaks in, and she ends up killing her mom, then she kills her dad. And her sister's like, you're a murderer. And then she gets put into 
a uh, group home. And she has to achieve to get out of the group home, which we've seen before. It's called the Red River Institute. An institutional home for the orphan soups. So uh, Marie, you know, she can release plasma. She cuts herself and she's been training and training. And like other kids are just <laughs> doing crazy things. Like they don't care. So what she's hoping for is that she gets selected for Godolkin, the university, which is like a university for soups, but only a very small percentage of them make it on to becoming heroes who get to protect a city, perhaps, as opposed to being part of the seven. There's like a, a tier to it and there's rankings, kind of like My Hero Academia with less violence and less sex and drugs and alcohol and things. So she gets in, she's very excited, and basically the teachers at her community, like her, her group home are like, don't screw this up, you don't have a lot of chances. And if you recall, there's a lot of throwbacks to the, uh, to the, to the, uh, to the boys, where, and you didn't have to watch the boys to get this. Like, you get it, she has superpowers, she, she's going to a school, I think it's separate from the boys, which is smart. You really start to, you get an idea of the world, but you didn't need to see everything. There's a lot of nice Easter eggs, but there's not enough to, to make you go like, oh, what's the problem? Because if you recall, they used to use, there's the lamp lighter is a school of crime fighting, but they use the lamp lighter to destroy any like miscreant superheroes. So if they get out of control, he's the one who takes care of them and kills them. Uh, so she watches a friend of hers who was in the group home, this Marie Moreau, and watches her get taken. And she's like, oh, if you get taken, you don't know what happens. But we, if you watched the boys, you know that they get killed. But they set it up enough to know that this is not a good thing. You don't want to go there. You want to go to college, right? Which I think is very good. It's, it's cool. Whatever. So she gets a roommate, and her roommate is uh, Cricket. Tiny Cricket? Little Cricket. That's right. And she gets she can get small, but you don't know that much about it. She starts off in a in a wrestling ring. She's a big YouTuber and she fights a gerbil. Which you don't get to see, but she's like kind of weird. She's like, you need to be cool with all the rest of the kids. And Marie's only goal is to get into the crime fighting group. She doesn't want anything else. She's very interested in that. So things go along. Things get a little weird. She tries to, you know, meet up with the cool kids. It's, you know, all the typical stuff that you would see. I thought Patrick Schwarzenegger, Golden Boy, was a great character. He's a senior who's being groomed to become one of the seven. But you know that there's something wrong because when he meets his hero, who's like the head trainer, like... He's not the dean of the school, but he's the, the one who teaches all of the superhero courses. You know something is going on. And uh, he, I, uh, I forget what his name is. Uh, Clancy Summer, I'll, I'll say it in here somewhere. He like, writes a bunch of books, and she, re, you know, Marie wants to get into his classes because this is the story of Marie. She gets invited to go out and party with them. And clear, what, what's really interesting is, you know, you see these kids and their powers are just out of control. They can, they can barely control them. They don't know what's going on. And this just not seem like a good place for these kids to be. Um, who is the character actor who plays the... That's really not cool that they don't tell you in this article. He's a character actor. You've seen him in like Pet Cemetery and some other places. I think his name's Clancy. You've definitely seen him in a bunch of things. He's like the professor of this. So she really, really wants to get into, into the crime fighting courses. Marie does. And she's essentially being blocked out of them by, and this is a weird character. And you know, the thing I was worried about was like, oh, diversity, inclusion, blah, blah, blah. There's like a, a character that could change between male and female, but also can like, stand in a fight against Patrick Schwarzenegger's character. I don't really, the character's name is Polarity, which I didn't realize that by watching it. You just don't know. It's like, yeah, they wield incredible strength and agility as well as the ability to switch between genders, which didn't make a ton of sense to me. 
Um, there's the popular girl who's dating Golden Boy, and she can control people's mind with just touching them. Kind of reminded me of like Rogue from the X-Men on some level. And then, um, you know, Marie is like, I could be a superhero, but they don't want her in the group. Well, she stumbles upon... Go, by the end of it, like there's, a, there's, they have like a, they go out to a party, and the one kid almost kills somebody, and Marie saves the woman because you know their powers are out of control, and she pushes the blood back in the woman. I uh, well, then she goes and tries to pitch her case again to be. She gets expelled. They're like, we need a fall guy. We can't have our number one superhero going into the seven get blamed. Typical vault stuff. Well, he has post-traumatic stress syndrome. Something happened with his brother and his powers. Golden Boy has like the power to, I don't know if he turns into lava or I don't know what he, or the power of a sun. Who the heck knows what he has? But he goes and meets the professor, burns the professor. Uh, as Brink brinks the professor, he's about to expel Marie, the blood controller. Well, he burns his mentor he says something about the woods. He keeps hallucinating about the woods. He goes into Brink's office and Golden Boy burns him. And then it's like, you saw me kill him. I need to, you know, you can't see this. You're going to ruin my life, et cetera, et cetera. And then they go and they ha- kind of have like a su- pseudo fight where she runs away. And then basically he kills himself. And the number one is up for grabs. But does she really want to be part of this with her blood powers? Her blood powers also make her extremely weak when she goes through too much blood, which is exactly the same as Dead Man Wonderland. You have to think they they must have watched anime and seen Dead Man Wonderland. It's an uncompleted series, but I highly recommend it if you're an anime fan at all. But I just I'm telling you, this this show was awesome. Oh, parts I skipped that were truly, truly cool. There's a lot of, it's not, the pacing is good, the direction is good, it's as good as the boys, if not better on some level, like it might be better, like it's not better, better, because Homelander's not in it, but some of the characters are really good, they really got a good grip on this. Little Cricket has a sex scene that is one of the most outrageous things I've ever seen. In order for Little Cricket to get small, she has to strip down all of her clothes and she has to, basically she has an eating disorder. So the more that she purges, the smaller she gets. Because her her guy that she wants to, you know, her biggest fan, because she's upset, she's a social media star, but she gets a lot of hate, just like I do for my Star Wars rants. Hey, this is something I, I like. I think is really good. Positive reviews here. Really good stuff. You guys will enjoy this, I promise. So she meets up with her biggest fan and he's like, can you get really tiny and hang from the tip of my wang? So she decides to get small and she's punching his wang, hanging. From, it's the most outrageous sex thing I've ever, I don't think I've ever seen anything like it. I, he's like, is this the biggest thing you've ever seen? And she's like, yeah, this is the biggest thing I've ever seen because she's little t- tiny it's it's so ridiculous i can't believe they filmed it it's outrageous it's great this whole thing is great there's a lot of blood gore violence i mean if you're not up for any of that don't watch this but you're gonna like it because i like it and we we agree so i'm in i watched the first episode i'm gonna keep reviewing more of them i thought it was fantastic you guys should watch it hopefully there's some more good cameos but it wasn't spoiled by like if you you didn't have to watch the boys to like this is not getting as much publicity. I hope people start talking about it because it's a great show. I don't care. Like the diverse, I, I was afraid that, she, that the lead character would be like super strong, whamming, so strong. But she has a really weird, unique power. And it's kind of like she's has to learn to control it because she has a tragic backstory. She has to, she has a great motivation. She, you know, at one point her sister calls her a monster and her whole point of becoming a superhero is so that she could prove that she's not a monster. What great motivation, really good writing. I'm liking it, feels supernatural. Everything's awesome. I'm liking it so far, catch it. If you like what I do here, you can catch more of what I do. We do a lot of reviews. We also have a full length audio podcast, iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, all those places for free. 
If you don't like podcasts, you can also catch us here on YouTube. We live stream at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Friday nights, come join the party. It's a good time. Catch it live or catch it afterwards. It's all up to you, but we do a lot of reviews. We do 10-second reviews. A lot of good, funny, hilarious stuff ensues. You're going to like it. We love all y'all, but I am on to the next one.